Another White Dwarf and another Underworlds warband joins the ranks of Warcry. This month, 486, we get cards for Grisel's Arena, five Sisters of Slaughter for the Daughters of Cain warband. The release schedule for Underworlds is a new warband every second month, so if we keep getting Warcry rules in White Dwarf, we should see a pretty steady stream of new profiles. This warband has five fighters, all with a variety of different weapons, which should give us some fun options. We've already had Morgwaite's Blade Coven, which is mainly focused on Witch Elves. You can check out my review of them in the Order Warbands. Unfortunately, great models, but not great profiles, so hopefully this warband will be better. This is an overview of all the fighters. Just to give us a little context, the link for this dashboard is in the comments so you can explore yourself. We have Grisel, the leader at 185 points, with the remainder four in the 80 to 90 range. Wounds look pretty low, while damage is pretty average. The leader Grisel is near the top of her bracket for damage, but it is relatively flat from 125. Out of the remaining, Kalexis is the best damage efficiency per points, and does seem to be above average. Speaking of which, this graphic shows what I'm hoping for in a fighter. My assumption is that the fighter will have 4 move and 4 toughness. Sometimes they'll have a little more or less, indicated by the plus and minus, but usually that's a trade-off, balance elsewhere in the profile. I look for 3 wounds for every 25 points, so a 100 point model will hopefully have 12 wounds. Similarly, I'm looking for 1 average damage uh, versus T4 for every 25 points. So at 100 points, I'm looking for 4 average damage. Now that is a relatively aggressive damage profile, so I'm not too concerned if a fighter doesn't have that baseline. Alright, let's get into some of the fighters. Now first up, we have Grisel the Slaughterer. She's fast with 5 speed, but trades that off with a little lower toughness than normal of 3. 20 wounds for 185 points is slightly below what we'd hope. The damage of 7.5 on the other hand is slightly above. So, like I said, the damage average I look for is usually pretty competitive, so I'm happy to say this is a good fighter. She does compare to the Slaughter Queen. Damage is slightly better with Grisel due to the extra point on crit, and she has two extra wounds, but that's costing you 25 extra points, which is costly. You lose out on the quad ability, but that's rarely an issue. If you were just getting the damage at two wounds, I'd say this was probably a bad deal, but as we'll get into later, you will get access to some extra abilities. This is a common enough trend for these Underworld fighters. A few extra points in exchange for extra abilities, so keep that in mind as we move forward. Next up we have Triala, the Lash. Looking at the baseline, this fighter is a little bit below for damage and wounds. Not too much though, we're, we'd be looking for 3.2 damage and 9.6 wounds. We do get move 5 without the toughness getting downgraded, which is nice. So overall the fighter seems decent. More importantly, she has reach of 2, which I think pushes her up to a good fighter. Now, compared to the Sister of Slaughter with Whip and Buckler, everything is the same, but you are paying 5 more points for access to the abilities. Retera the Entangler is similar to the Sister of Slaughter with Whip and Blade. Again, we have reach, which is nice, but we're actually losing a little damage this time. She has one less attack dice, but one more strength, which ends up being a net loss. Kalexis is a new profile. She compares best against the Witch Elf, I think, but she's 25 points more and is doing nearly double the damage. Thinking about the baseline, for every 25 points we're looking for 3 wounds and 1 average damage. At 100 that'll be 12 wounds and 4 damage, so Kalexis is a little under when it comes to wounds, but over when it comes to damage. I do like her quite a lot, and she makes a nice new stat line for the Daughters gain. Traxia is similarly a new profile. The closest comparison we have here is the Witch Elf with the Blade and Buckler. You are paying an extra 20 points, but it gets you an extra 1.3 damage on average, but unfortunately not much else. So less damage at Klexus, no reach like Retaria, but you do get 4 toughness. Okay, let's move on to the abilities. This warband has 4 new abilities which anyone in this warband can use. We have a reaction, a double, and 2 triples. So no quad, which I consider a good thing, as they're typically unreliable. The reaction acrobatic display reduces damage they take from hits by 1, which is decent. As I talked about in the last video, the most common time to use your reaction is when you're expected to die, so an ability where you can increase chance of surviving is pretty good. Note that this will not reduce damage from crits, and the FAQ GW confirmed that abilities that mention hits do not refer to crits as well. The double Peerless Combatant is an interesting meta choice. It prevents your opponent from doing damage with reactions. Now, typically, that's going to refer to the Universal Reaction Counter, which will do 1 damage for each dice it misses, and 2 damage for any ones. I feel like that's going to be a pretty niche ability, but having options is never a bad thing. The first triple is Combination Attack. 
If you've already done damage to a target, you can use this triple to get an extra attack. This is great. An extra action for a triple is really good, and the setup isn't that hard, as you'll be looking to do some damage anyway. You definitely could have situations where you move up and with the attack and can't use the ability, but you can always use that triple somewhere else with someone later. I think this ability by itself justifies Griselle's cost. She's high damage and an extra attack from her is going to have a lot of value. The last triple is Martial the Bladestorm, which is an aura effect that gives nearby arena fighters an extra point of toughness. It's a little disappointing that it's limited to just arena rather than any friendly fighter. I think maybe design were being a little too conservative here, but I can understand the caution. The fighters in this warband are 3 or 4 toughness, so unless you're up against strength 5 opponents it should help. I doubt this is ability you'll be using every turn. But the option is nice, especially with Daughters of Cain who are typically quite fragile. One nice feature of this month's White Dwarf is they also include the abilities for the Daughters of Cain that Griselle's fighter can use. So with the miniatures and the cards you have everything you need without having to look at any PDFs. If you do look at the PDFs you will notice that there is an extra ability in there, the Double Killing Strike, but in the FAQ that got the Trapper rune mark added to it, so no one from this warband can use it. To quickly go through this list, they have an awesome reaction gladiatorial display, which will do 4 damage if the target didn't get any crits. For low damage fighters, trading an action for a pretty good chance of doing 4 damage looks like a really good deal. The double blade in blood requires at least 1 damage on the target, but it is an upgraded onslaught, giving you the same extra attack die, but also an extra point of strength. That really is super good. Often an extra point of strength will increase the average damage by 1. The triple slaughter strength pushes that strength increase a little bit more, with the potential of a triple 5 or 6 giving an extra 3 strength. That can be quite good, but often the extra dice from onslaught is going to be better, so make sure you math out the options so you know which fighters will benefit from which ability the most. And last we have a triple requiring the hero rune mark, which gives a boost of plus 1 attack dice to nearby friendly fighters. Definitely a nice option to have, even if you do need to kill before using it. So, some nice abilities and lots of options for this warband. There are two reactions, one doing damage, one reducing damage taken. Two doubles, one upgrading an onslaught, and the other a situational and the reaction ability. Four triples in total. I think the combination attack is the standout here. But the options to boost toughness, boost attacks, and boost strength all have their place. So what do we have here? These are all good fighters, most hitting the ambitious targets that I look for. But they don't really offer anything particularly game changing for Daughter of Cain. You could take the Slaughter Queen and a combination of Sisters of Slaughter or Witch Elves to make a similar warband. This warband does offer some minor tweaks to the existing fighters though, which is quite nice. Calexis in particular is pretty great for damage, and Griselle herself justifies her cost, in my opinion, due to the combination attack ability. The arena I do have a few defensive options, like the triple and reaction, but in my experience the number of wounds are the best indicator of a fighter's survivability, and we have a lot of fighters under the curve at 8. For the rest of order warbands, Griselle is a good hero option. She's fast with good health and does great damage, so she opens up access to the rest of her warband, giving other warbands some nice move 5 fighters. As a side note, this warband is 550 points out of the box. It's not that far off of full 1k. Grab yourself a different order Underworlds Warband and you'll be able to combine the two. GW still have a few of the old Warbands in stock under the Age of Sigmar section, although they don't have the Underworlds cards. While I doubt these fighters are going to shake up the Warcry meta at the top tables, these are some beautiful looking models and their profiles are good. So if you like the look of them, pick them up and have some fun with them. Personally, I'm thinking they might work well with my K9 Shadowstalkers just to round out the options. If you're interested in this warband, I recommend picking up this month's White Dwarf 486, which has all of the fighter and ability cards you need. If you're playing with the Compendium Warbands which don't have cards, check out the Warcry card creator which is linked in the notes. I'm constantly adding new features to this, it now has a better format for printing, an option for including the names of the rune marks, and if you're making abilities cards and only select 3 abilities, it uses a nicer format. So please do check it out, and if you have any suggestions, feel free to message me. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.